Crypto DLT with Mr. Connector. Be sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell for daily content. Let's go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Mr. Connector back again. Hope you guys are doing good. Let me get my levels right on my headphones. Wow, what a uh, down weekend we had in the crypto market. Um, was nice. <clears throat> well, the uh, not nice. We had a little bit of war action going on overseas. Uh, right after the closing bell, it seemed to have all escalated right after the closing bell Friday. So the stock market did not take a hit from any of that action that went on. Let me get a little tunes in my headphones. Down low there so we can groove with a little tunes in my headphones. But yeah, so the uh, stock market benefits on the weekend from not being able to trade on the weekend. Uh, and of course, crypto took the dump instead of stock markets. So guys, these big players... They're, uh, they're timing everything right. They're two steps ahead of us. So we got to do everything we can to be informed in this space. Uh, let's see here. Hold on just a second. I'm just getting my settings right. I don't want to see my face in my peripheral. I need to pop out chat. One second. All right, we're just getting all set up for the live show today. Usually I go over, um, I burn through the news really fast. And, you know, I don't have a lot of followers yet. I do have a really good amount, though, actually. Uh, 211 followers, which is really good. Just started the channel a couple months ago. And I'm really enjoying it. Thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, it's going really good. But, um... I'm just still getting used to everything. Being live is so weird for me. Two months in, it's going great though. You know, I mean, I just got my first webcam right before this. I've never even been on online, but this is a uh, very cool, very cool. But yeah, we're getting back to uh, the crypto markets where uh, they took a dump because of the war escalation. And back Monday morning, and the stock markets open up, and everything seems to be okay. So, it's pretty wild. Uh, we're going to just ride this ride, guys. Up, Ride the ups and ride the downs. If you've got some capital, some fiat, pick up some you know, dollar cost average on those lows. But other than that, all we can do is stay informed, guys. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. Let's get right into our connector coin list. Past 24 hours, we've got ENT up the most, almost 10% electronium. And for those who don't know that, they have a, a brand new blockchain. I got an ENT a while back because they were a part of the Digital Pound Foundation. And I got the wallet, the ENT wallet, but I never liked it. I never, uh, it was slow, really slow. You had to wait, you know, it is proof of work, but it's nothing like Bitcoin proof of work. It relies on the, um, I guess the individual smartphones to God, there's so many coins. It's hard to keep up with how, how they all work. But anyways, there's a brand new blockchain they've unveiled. It's only been two weeks since uh, the new Electronium blockchain has come out. But that is uh, lightning fast now. So I'm curious to see if that's like a consensus mechanism or is it still, is it proof of work? Efficient proof of work? Because I remember there was, there is a narrative going around that these proof of work coins my, and the proof of stake coins might not have the clarity that the consensus mechanism coins like XRP and XLM have. And we're starting to see this narrative of, uh, you know, Uniswap may be sued by the SEC as well. 
And I think I have a little clip from Zach Richter explaining that pretty good, actually. Um, we got Velo coming in second. Velo is supposed to be the ripple of Asia, guys. Velo is... Hold on, I'll get my brain going here. It's a... They have a partnership with Solana. Solana is a settlement blockchain for Laos. And Velo is the clearinghouse for Laos. That's what I was trying to think of. They are a clearinghouse for the country of Laos now. And am I saying that right? Is it Laos or Laos? Let's see. And we got Energy Web Token. They're partnered with Ripple. And I believe they are partnered with the World Economic Forum for energy credits. I believe that's right. You guys, this is just for entertainment purposes only. I make mistakes just like anybody else. But I'm just trying to bring every bit of knowledge I can to the table. And hopefully, you know, if I'm wrong about anything, hit me up in the comments. I take criticism well. I have thick skin. You know, it takes, you know, it takes a, a tribe of people to get all this stuff right. And to try to stay ahead of these big players. To try to um, follow them, at least. Oh, but we've got XDC coming in fourth in the past 24 hours. Let's see what took the what's taken the biggest hit over the past 24 hours. We have uh, AI Coin Bit Sensor and Verge XVG. XVG may be a little sleeper, guys. They are ISO compliant. I haven't looked at Verge in a while. We did just add them to our connector coin list because of their grouping and some documents we read about the ISO compliant coins and XVG is one of them. Let's check out their website right quick. You guys, give me a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'm trying to build it up. I'm still working on my times. You know, believe it or not, that's this has been the hardest part of this this journey, this streaming journey is coming up with a a set time where you you guys know where I'm when I'm going live every day. So I'd like to do it twice twice a day. That's been my goal. It's just been hard to do, but I'm gonna try, guys. And I've got my cup of coffee here, so we're getting caffeinated. Two cups a day, one in the morning, or probably one and a half in the morning, and one and a half in the afternoon. That makes three. XVG, native coin, on the left there. And the XVG ETH is their ERC-20 version coin. A secure and friendly, user-friendly digital currency built for everyday transactions a digital currency designed for everyday transactions just read that twice <laughs> our network provides world-class features to ensure our users are able to send and receive digital payments quickly safely and securely i'm just looking over this one with you guys we're researching together today verge provides the security of blockchain based payments to everyday users with easy to use tailored to real life needs and applications open source development one team two chains and unlimited use cases everyday use mass adoption yeah but what's setting it apart guys what sets xvg apart from the others that's a really nice looking app there and it is on the connector coin list, but we don't own any. Just being transparent with you guys. I'll let you guys know if I'm in something or if I'm not the best I can. Pretty clean UI. Download your preferred Verge Pay wallet here. All right, guys, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I just wanted to see a little bit about this XVG. unstoppable domains I do have a few of those unstoppable domains 
I uh, was lucky enough to get in it pretty early and they had a, not an airdrop, but they, they gave credits where you could go and buy other domains. So I did benefit from that. And I pick up, I picked up a bunch of those dot X domains that that's a possibility. I mean, if we're going to a future internet or value, is it always going to be dot com? I mean, with all these X's, when you think that a dot X would be easier and cooler, basically, I don't know. Voice life change now. Travala. All right, so we're just going to keep our eyes on Verge. No real stories on Verge today. Just wanted to check out the website for them. Research this stuff together. It is down a little bit today. So is Dag, Waves, and Akash. Akash had a really good run over the past year. Up 911%. Uh, let's see if you're buying today. Let's go and see what's down over the past year. That way we get our deep lows. Uh, is this Juno project? I heard, heard, I haven't heard anything on this for a while. We got an airdrop a while back. That airdrop shot up really high and crashed really low along with a lot of other coins a couple years ago. But look how red that is. That's supposed to be smart contracts on the Cosmos ecosystem. And we've seen that Cosmos ecosystem, guys. It's a powerhouse. You got Atom and Osmosis. And recently, Corium's um, created a bridge from the Cosmos ecosystem over to the XRP ecosystem. So that is very cool. And Adam's down to $8. There's your buy right there, guys. Not financial advice. But Adam is down 38% over the past year. It's only $8.06. I've seen that thing take off before out of nowhere. Ranked 34th. Cosmos, Adam. All right, let's check on our gold prices. We've got $2,384. And silver, that's is uh eighty uh twenty eight dollars and eighty three cents silver is up three point three four cents today um hopefully there's a turnaround in silver hopefully this is finally silver's time to run we know this is real money real currency is silver guys anything sticking out to us Zinc up 5%. Coca, coffee. I don't know what the EEX is. And tins up today. Just taking a quick look at commodities. And while we're on metals, let's take a quick look at, at the gold miners. This is the past year. Up pretty good over the past year. Let's go straight into the Dixie chart. This is the value of the dollar over the past year. You see it's back reaching the highs of the years almost. 106. My question is how are they valuing this chart? What are the specs of the Dixie chart? I know it values the dollar, but what is it comparing the dollar to, to get this, to get this chart? Is it comparing it to, you got to compare it to something to get the value of it. It's kind of weird valuing the dollar. They're valuing the Dixie chart at 106. And you could you could just turn the the pair around the, the gold pair to value the dollar if you ask me you could invert if you got um so many dollars per the amount per ounce of gold invert that to so many ounces of gold per dollar that would give you the price of dollar right there so if anybody knows how they're 
coming up with this number for the value of the dollar, hit me up in the comments. I think that's a pretty good question. Bar chart. All right, let's see. We've got our real world assets. We always want to take a quick look at those. And the first section is tokenized private credit. Earn real years, yields by investing in private credit loans to businesses. Active, we've got $612 million worth of loans, private loans. Average APR that's out there is 9.91%. So that's high for a loan, a little high. I mean, of course, credit cards are way higher, but this is instant money, guys. If when they say tokenize, you get it and you can get it in minutes. Like set up account, give it collateral, you got your loan. Bam. At the speed of blockchain. Goes over a little map. Active loans by sector. So they are on they have tokenized real estate. Forty seven million dollars, you know, when you start counting real estate that might only be a couple hundred homes <clears throat> but still that is the beginning we're at the beginning guys and this uh this page here is very important tokenizing real world assets we want to see which chains they're locking up this value on and what kind of price action that brings to the chain so i think that's a good question to ask ourselves uh, we've got auto loans, 203 million carbon projects, almost 40 million consumer loans, 215 million and FinTech almost 90 million. Be nice to know exactly what they mean by FinTech. Is that leveraged loans for trading, you know, and these are the active loans by protocol. So these protocols, Centrifuge, Goldfinch, Maple Curve, Credix. These are uh, layer twos built on top of Ethereum mostly. Credix is Solana though. But Centrifuge. Let's see, is this, is this a link? to centrifuge let's check it out right quick let's see here total value locked on centrifuge 12 12.5 million dollars and for centrifuge you've got u.s treasuries real world assets uh let's see animoy liquid treasury fund you got almost ten thousand dollars, ten million dollars circle USDC value. Why are they valuing it in USDC? I guess that's an easy way to get out of it, guys. We saw where Circle has hooked up with BlackRock, so you can get in and out of that bill, um, tokenized fund easily into usdc and they're already putting they're valuing their fund in usdc so that to me means that they're using it to get in and out of this treasury fund all right let's keep an eye on centrifuge everything's going up pretty good all right, back to our real world assets. X Y Z. Let's look at actual U.S. tokenized treasuries. We've got 1.15 billion dollars locked up of tokenized treasuries on the blockchain. So this top one in green. That's uh, F O B X X. That's the Franklin Templeton fund that is one of the first ones and they've locked up their treasury fund on stellar as you see in the yellow 
Stellar for Treasuries is right behind Ethereum. Stellar did overtake Ethereum in their overall tokenized assets, though. But this is just Treasuries. And Friday, the build fund was missing off this website, but it is back. And these are the little numbers here. They keep going up, guys. You see that? Look at that. Recently, within the past month, they are locking up more and more value on these public chains. Protocol. There's the issuers on the right. Franklin Templeton, BlackRock, Ondo, Superstate Asset Trust. And you see here, Franklin Templeton is on the Stellar and the Polygon network. I've got just a few Polygon. I never, guys, I never got into the Ethereum ecosystem. I tried. I ended up getting upset every time I tried using Ethereum. And even they say, even Polygon, uh, they say Polygon layer two Ethereum is going to fix the scaling and the gas fees and all that. Well, guys, you still have to buy Ethereum and pay gas to get Ethereum into your wallet and then convert that to Polygon. It's just very confusing. I, I never liked the way Ethereum was set up. Or Bitcoin for that fact. Why am I going to use something I don't like? Let's check out our stable coins. So these stable coins are considered real world assets as well. And they are locked up on chain, just like tokenized treasuries and private credit. We've got US Tether, of course, in the green, USDC in the purple, and that's the FDUSD. That's first digital, I think. I think that's a Hong Kong dollar. Most of that USDT is going to be running on Tron. Yep, in the blue, Tron USDT. But when you add it with the Ethereum USDT in the yellow right beneath it, and you know that's uh makes up USDT makes up most of the market, of course, and USDC, FD USD. You know what a perfect time for that Ripple stablecoin to come into play. We're gonna watch these stablecoins just grow and grow. Right now, you've got $154 billion of stable coins. Each week, $285 billion is transferred. And there's 703 weekly addra addresses for these stable coins. But what is a stable coin, guys, when you back it with fiat? What does that mean? It's backed with fiat, right? They say you want cash and cash equivalents to back your stable coins. We're in a mess, guys, because nothing's back in fiat. There's nothing back in the dollar. The, I, I shouldn't even say the dollar anymore. It's a Federal Reserve note is what it is. So we're backing our stable coins with Federal Reserve notes. Make it make sense, guys. Make it make sense. Let's go on to the XRP ledger. These are our top performing coins over the past 24 hours. We're going DEX volume, not overall volume across the entire cryptoscape. Just on the XRP ledger, you've got $60,000 of solo trading in the past 24 hours. And only 48000 of USD Circle. That is the GitHub version. That is not the Circle issued version. GitHub has issued USDC coin for Circle onto the XRP ledger. It's a little confusing, but these are the coins that 
are eligible to be traded against XRP, especially on the decks and in the new AMM. Here's the new pools. Top volume pools are, of course, USD Circle against XRP. There's $27,000 of that traded yesterday. Oh, what's this? XEPE. Got another meme coin on the XRP ledger. That thing traded 2.5K yesterday. So we always want to check these AMM pools. I love this XPmarket.com. <clears throat> you can see how many liquidity providers for these pools. USDC and Solo, the top providers, 695 providers. So 695 addresses are locking up assets in these in that first pool. <clears throat> like to take a drink of coffee and then a drink of water behind it. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's move on to our X bookmarks. You guys, if you got any questions, hit me up in the chat or comments. Let's see what we got here. Go over a few things I saved. Oh, yeah, I've seen uh, Zach Richter a few times. He's got a pretty good YouTube channel. He is uh, saying exactly what we said the other day about the... Uh, about them going after Uniswap and its difference in the XRP ledger. Uh, he lays it out pretty, pretty good here, actually. The geniuses building on the XRP ledger have done this so well. What's happening right now is we are adding utilities and functions to the XRP ledger without smart contracts. Why is this important? Well, I believe that Uniswap... I've been hitting on that this whole time, guys. Smart contracts are not better than native made it native action so especially when you get into uh if we're talking about the unified ledger uh what swift is trying to do with what is it ccip with um chain link i believe that involves smart contracts for atomic swaps that's not good you don't want to use smart smart contracts for atomic swaps you want native protocols smart contracts why is this important well i believe that uniswap is about to get sued by the sec and the sec is going to say that the smart contract right the layer two smart contract on top of ethereum that's what constitutes an investment contract unregistered security now i'm not saying i agree with this or support the sec i'm just saying this is the case that they're going to make and this is going to be very unfortunate for uniswap and all the other smart contract platforms Versus when we compare what's happening on the XRP ledger, we just had a proposal for native on-chain lending. But once again, it's at the protocol level, no smart contracts. Similar to our XRP ledger AMM, there's no smart contracts. It's at the protocol level, completely decentralized. So basically the XRP ledger is going to be in the clear, everything else in trouble. The geniuses building on the X So yeah, we've been discussing that. Everything on the protocol level, built into the main net that's what we want and he's talking about their uh they're passing lending guys I, I got into this space loving xrp xlm but when you start digging into xpr wow i mean the functionality is there they have native lending uh, i've got some loan tokens when you go to metalx.com you can you know swap natively they have a built-in dex native dex on the xpr network they have built-in staking which that's still up for question if staking is going to be allowed no staking kind of centralizes power over a network so if it's so there may have there may be some question about staking i'm not sure yet but metal loan they've had that they've had a native loan protocol 
for years on the XPR network and I've used it. I've got tokens that are locked up until 2027 and every, every other second guys, I get coins delivered to my private, to my web off wallet. So if you're not, if you haven't looked into XPR, I guess I am, and I've heard Zach talk junk, but I guess I am a Proton boy. I don't know, I don't to call myself that, but I like the Proton Network, XPR. I mean, it's up there. I've used all these wallets, Zum, Lobster. Uh, a lot of people hate the Lobster wallet, but it performs great. If you, if you stay away from the scams, it's really good wallet. And the WebAuth wallet, wow. WebAuth wallet is a powerhouse, guys, I'm telling you. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, controversy lately. I am not up to date on it, on, on the voting. I should be more involved in the governance of these chains. Um, they had a, they had some kind of vote. From my understanding, there was a vote. There's a consortium, and something was changed. And the voters didn't get a fair shake at it. You know, the voters were kind of, they didn't get a fair vote from what I understand. Uh, I, I don't even know what the vote was on. So I don't have enough info to comment on it. The only thing I will say is, guys, we're in a nascent blockchain space. Different coins are figuring out their place in the world. So I am willing to sacrifice a little bit of decentralization in order to get the networks figured out. You will need you you do need humans at the start of the network. So a couple years later when these coins actually find their places in the new financial system there may be some a little bit of centralization involved to steer this coin the right way. Now that's just my get my guess at it, my take at it. Because we're in a nascent undeveloped system, we may have to not be so strict on decentralization. Now I say it all the time, I know, decentralized, decentralized trading, uh everything should be decentralized. And that is the truth. Once we get all this figured out, once we get the internet of value, once we get the quantum financial system, whatever that is. All right, moving on. We got Christine Lagarde. This is an oldie but goodie from Bond Crypt Digital Assets. Christine Lagarde says, because they're not seeing it coming and they're not embracing it. If you think of circles and ripples, see the bigger picture when it comes, when the time comes, who's in, is in. See why? Price suppression, lawsuit, photo on XRP. This is a really good one. I remember when this happened, and this is this is pretty good here. Check this out. And those who um, survive, but it will be between those who. Hold on, let me. The volume's so low. Let me crank it. I've got extra software where I can crank this volume. Just got to remember to turn it down. And those who um, survive, but it will be between those who are cannibalized because they are not seeing it coming and they're not embracing it and those who self-induce that cannibalization and i'm using cannibalization on purpose because it's a bit of a striking horrible word but it's really what it means it's you're going to disrupt your business model you're going to change it you're going to reduce your cost you're going to expedite your transactions and you're going to continue to inspire confidence because you will build that on the basis of an existing backbone which is your bank and the confidence relationship that you've established with your customers. So that's where I see changes happening now. If you think of circle and ripples and all those 
that that's where they are active and and uh, helpful that's where they're active and helpful if you think of the circles and ripples so she sees the uh utility and for all we know they are using it let's hope all right then we got uh australia here let's see xrp drops ripple is working with over 500 organizations and many of them are using xrp at the heart as a bridge currency and that's already happening this is the ripple payments roadshow in melbourne and i believe the lady on the right works with ripple let's check it out so you know ripple believes in utility so there are a lot of crypto players out there who frankly won't last long and uh, and i don't know if i get hit with copyright it scares a lot of people in logistics i think if, you, if they start but they're having a good time aren't they taken that that baseline technology Let's see if i can get past we said from the very start copyright if i talk through that it every technology needs a use case and for yeah. us the very clear every use technology case needs is a use payments case. because the xrp ledger which is an open payments. source public blockchain yep. was purpose built for purpose payments built for, for payments. speed of transaction speed of so transactions. we absolutely see it you know by over 500 organizations are working with 500 us today, organizations and many of them are using Ripple, XRP at the heart using of the XRP. currency. So that is already happening, That's and we uh, see much more coming. Much more coming. All right, so hopefully I can get by copyright with that. It's weird. Some of these uh, songs they will strike your channel, even if there's even if it's behind talking. So we'll see if I get a strike for that learning as we go bond crypt dropping bonds again let's see digital assets advocate we got a respectable a respected thought leader in crypto space known worldwide xrp is artificially too low for what the utility and what the potential of it is it's a great investment opportunity once barriers are erased share your top three cryptocurrency picks. I think that Bit hasn't reached anywhere near mass adoption yet. 22% of households own Bitcoin. Fast and forward. I'm going to go out on a limb here. here I think Ethereum will eventually, in the next five to 10 years, be the number one crypto past Bitcoin. I think Ethereum will be the number one crypto eventually. Okay. And almost past, in 2017, it was very close to what we call flipping Bitcoin and being number one. Yeah, that's because they got a free pass. I still think it has the potential to do that. My last one is XRP. We all know about the lawsuits with the SEC, but I think that the price is artificially too low for what the utility and what the potential of it is. That's a great investment opportunity because once those artificial barriers are erased, which I think it will be in the next year and a half, the price could rise to what the true value is. And right now, I think XRP's true value should be between 10 and $15. Mm -hmm. But I think with the next bull run, we could see $20, $25. That's some deep insight coming from a software engineer background yeah artificially suppressed once we get past the barriers we're good to go so he knows what we've been going through this whole time fighting fud fighting the machine that's what ripple's been up against the machine guys fighting for the entire space and we've got jack the rippler breaking Leak reveals China to push XRP and Bitcoin to new highs as the Hong Kong SFC, that's the stock and financial commodities. I believe that's their regulator in Hong Kong. They, as they uh, had approved spot Bitcoin, a spot ETF, and that XRP spot ETF is coming. So I'm not exactly sure where they see the spot ETF is coming. Um, there's more to this tweet here. This is massive new for XRPL. It means that we are about to see DeFi token on the XRPL skyrocket. Okay, so this is another ad here. I've seen a lot of these from the community for the CTF token. We're not in that. We're not condoning it. It seems like a few people are really in that, trying to push that. But this is uh, 
repos from Forbes, digital assets. Shock leak reveals China could be about to blow up the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. They got to let you know, guys, before they do it somehow. That's what I've always heard. I'm spilling coffee. How did I spill coffee? Imagine that. Well, all right, we're just having a relaxed Monday. Just kind of cruising through the news today. And I found this one from Insurrection Barbie. This could be, this should be the number one story in America right now. The IRS is going through Americans' bank accounts without warrants, without crimes. This is, uh, you know, we hear a lot that it hurts our soul with the amount of tyranny going on, guys. And here's another one um, that they should. Uh, I thought we had Fourth Amendment, guys. Why are they going into our bank accounts? What we have learned is that the IRS, in fact, has been using AI to access bank accounts of American citizens without any kind of a search warrant. Or We really have to watch this AI because they're using it to massively do what they want to do on a massive scale. And even some of them are putting the blame on AI. That's what's scary. I saw where there was a targeting system, weapons targeting system. Not going to say where. You can probably guess, but they're using it to target individuals without human individual, human intervention. I guess they're thinking that's going to release them of liability. For those decisions but they're using ai here to, to go in and search for discrepancies through millions and millions of americans bank accounts or even without any specific uh, claim that they have committed a crime so this was something that was uh, discovered by, uh, by an under guys the government cannot even look into anything unless they think you've committed a crime that's our rights they can't go searching and eavesdropping and setting you up without you have actually already committed a crime or being inspective inspect that they are going to commit a crime suspect that they are going to commit a crime or have already committed a crime. That's when the law kicks in. Cover journalist, and what they found is that the IRS has claimed that they have access to every single person's bank account. This person also indicated that they've been working with the Department of Justice and that they have absolutely no problem whatsoever going after the little guy to make sure that they are paying their taxes. Mm. This is such a blatant violation of the Fourth Amendment that we have, Jim Jordan and I, sent just what I said about the Fourth Amendment a letter to the IRS demanding that they provide additional information about what they are doing with AI and what they are doing to protect the civil rights of American citizens. So, Congresswoman, what's the end game here? Because at the end of the day, you can't put the AI genie back in the bottle, and it's so easy, easy rather, to use these technologies um, in the way that you're suspecting the IRS is. How do you protect American citizens and our constitutional rights? Well, one of the things is we need a new administration in November because this administration has been absolutely lawless in terms of its surveillance of, of us, of members of Congress, of local officials, of people who are protesters, of voters. This, this administration has completely ignored the Bill of Rights, whether it's the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment. They have weaponized the government against us. So one of the things we have to do is we have to have a new administration come this November. And there's nothing to hold them accountable. If they're, if they're in charge, there's no mechanism to hold them accountable, it seems. Hmm, that's tough there, guys. So what do you think about some people saying that AI should be in charge of government? 
I mean, all these humans are obviously somehow compromised. The whole system set up. You got a revolving door of government agencies where they come in and they go after specific individuals or companies that won't harm their chances of getting a job in the future. So no one goes after the hedge funds, the big, the big money who pays well, no one's going to go after them. So what do you think about a letting AI <clears throat> maybe into the, I mean, replacing the sec with AI. How about that? If everything's running on chain and everything's tokenized, and we have governance models on chain where the stakeholders, us, can vote certain ways. I don't know, guys. I'm trying to live in the future. I'm trying to see what it's going to be like. Because I know what we have now is not working. So is that... So is, is the new world order... Is that something good? It's got to be better than the old world order that we're in now and that we have been. So anything's got to be better than this. Good question, I think. Uh, some people think Binance has a, has a free pass. We've got Loma posting. I think Binance coin is a live dark horse for majors structurally looking good in both usdc and the bitcoin pairing negative funding since it's typically hedged against spot holdings for fee reductions by larger wells and they are free of sec persecution in the short midterm they have a bag so free from sec persecution and here's a little post from F row rider <laughs> smack to the face crypto influencer is bullish on bnb because it's free of persecution binance is literally in the middle of a massive massive sec suit over bnb that they're likely highly likely to lose it says when is the crypto community finally going to tar and feather these clowns? Unregistered offer of sale of security assets. The SEC charged Binance for three for the unregistered offers and sales of BNB, Binance USD, and crypto lending products known as Simple Earn and BNB Vault. I never got into exchange tokens. Uh, centralized exchange. I've never wanted to get into those tokens. I, I, th I always thought if there's any lawsuits coming for securities, they're going to go after the centralized exchange tokens first because, you know, they, they run them. So I've never really understood why Binance, you know, I know Binance is huge. But I never really wanted to be in that coin. And we've got from 707 Crypto. These are the categories for MICA regulations. We went over some the other day. Which assets does MICA regulate? The new framework defines three categories of crypto assets that fall within its uh, jurisdiction. That's a little bit blurry. But on the left, in the white, we've got 5,000 plus crypto assets. The MICA framework attempts to categorize all these assets into three categories. Utility tokens, e-money tokens, and asset reference tokens. Uh, the utility tokens are crypto assets intended to provide access exclusively to a good or a service supplied by their issuers and the e-money tokens are crypto assets that maintain a stable value when referencing the value of one official currency 
and ASO reference tokens, the ART, are crypto assets that maintain a stable value by referencing other assets or currencies. Okay. Just thought I'd bring that to you. Starting to get definitions. And we've got Ross Vandermeer. Oh, this is a, um, and on, um, AIIB's new system is ready to implement it in governments, those who participate in China's Belt and Road Initiative and European Union. It will be connected indirectly to World Bank, IMF, and United Nations. And you'll know how. Gold and Energy Standard Economy. We will witness the return of gold standard economy in our lifetime, near future, with energy and XRP backed system. So who knows where these anonymous postings come from, but I like what he's saying there. Witness the return of gold standard economy in our lifetime, near future, with energy and XRP backed system. Energy and XRP backed system. I like that. And he's posting this as well, referencing this. Chinese government launched a public blockchain conflux network. It's an ultra large scale blockchain infrastructure platform for the Belt and Road Initiative. In 2023, late 2023, like in November, December, the first ever cross border settlement for gold using the digital yuan. And remember, we've talked about the Belt Road Initiative for a very long time, right? What is it? It's 150 plus countries right now. 75% uh, of, of human population, 50 plus percent of global GDP and growing. And a lot of these countries are unindustrialized. So check this out. Chinese government just launched a new public blockchain infrastructure um, platform led by the Conflux Network. The new platform dubbed ultra large scale blockchain infrastructure platform for the Belt Road Initiative aims to create pub a public blockchain infrastructure platform. This platform will be able to support the implementation of cross-border cooperation projects along the Belt Road Initiative. So you have 75% of human population right there. And all of the deals I have mentioned for years have, are being settled on the digital yuan, most of them, the contracts that are building out this infrastructure. Now they have the ability, once they've industrialized and pulled all the shit out of the ground and built the roads and the bridges and the railroads and the maritime channels to pay for it all, going back and forth, sidestepping the swift on a digital system like project Embridge, which cuts the west out completely and totally and all of the bro the, the the pathways are connecting to the BRICS pathways like the north south corridor that goes from like iran to to uh to russia or to india past russia and out with, instead of going through you know the indian ocean where where you got the u.s navy all of these things are being done isolating the west and if you see the little by little the chessboard little by little by little by little look at all the pieces infrastructure look at the 10 countries that have already signed on to BRICS, and one of the countries that is formally applied i believe is sudan and if you look at next to egypt and saudi arabia and the united arab emirates and uh, iran they have the entire red sea and and um, straits of hormuz now covered the entire thing they have shipping lanes. They have relationships done mutually beneficially all over the world with the majority of human population. You have the president of Belarus calling for a summit to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. See that word cooperation and the Eurasian Economic Union into the brick in 20. China's ready to go. With a Belt and Road in Initiative. Um, China's always kind of kept their currency to themselves. They're, they're not an exporter of their currency. And with that economy, imagine what they can do by the new system. Imagine what they can do with the new system and still, and being able to sell their currency for another currency in the world using a bridge currency and keep still keeping their currency in their country by the use of the brick system or oh, what well, they've just got that's going to give them a big go ahead guys that's going to be pretty big there once they start using that brick system 
And we always hear London is ready. Uh, this guy, an MP and an economic secretary to HM Treasury, outlines that legislation is being developed to regulate stable coins and staking with plans to finalize proposals by their summer recess. I know that a cornerstone of our position as a world leader in fintech is the delivery of our regulatory regime for crypto assets and stable coins. The UK digital asset sector is at an exciting juncture and is well positioned to take advantage of increased regulatory clarity as well as some of the UK's strength. Now, when I was recently in the United States, I was in Washington, and the head of the CFTC, that one of their key regulators in this space, a guy called Rostin Benham, who's a fantastic guy and comes to the UK sort of two, three times a year, and I'd urge you to, to make sure, um, those of you that are interested, to try and speak to him or deal with him. And I was asked, we had a very long conversation about crypto assets and digital assets and what it means and what the opportunities are and what the difficulties are, etc. And one thing he said really stuck with me. And he said, look, Ben, you know, I can't pretend to know all the different aspects of crypto assets and exactly how they're going to develop. But what I do think is that they have the potential, particularly blockchain technology, has the potential to drive transformational change in financial markets over the next 10 years. And that is something that has really stuck with me from somebody who's expert in the regulatory aspects in this field. Uh, and that is something that I completely agree with and I'm committed to. So what does that look like from the British government perspective? We are committed to creating a regulatory environment that allows firms to innovate whilst also protecting the right consumers. Looking, for, looking to the future, we are, look, we are now working at pace to deliver the legislation to put our final proposals for our regime in place. These will deal with stablecoin and staking. Uh, and we hope to do this again by summer recess, sort of June, July time. Now, once it goes live, a whole host of crypto asset activities, including operating an exchange, taking custody of customers' assets, and other things, will come within the regulatory perimeter for the first time. Now, we've also set up the digital security sandbox, uh, and this regime will help firms adopt digital assets across traditional markets and asset classes, and in particular, by enabling those participating firms to have legislative requirements modified or even disapplied when those requirements inhibit innovation. We can then use our experience in the sandbox to make permanent amendments for UK legislation. That's what it's for. It's an approach that we've had broadly using sandboxes over the last 10 years, and it's been successful. All right. We'd like to see the UK stablecoin legislation and he mentioned he mentioned staking as well so that was one question i mentioned earlier are they gonna let the staking uh survive i uh, love staking uh the xpr metal i uh, stake um what else am i staking Adams, a big. I've been staking that a long time, guys. If you stake Adam, you qualify for air, different airdrops on uh, all through the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, HBAR is proof of stake. Actually, I'm not sure if, if the native is proof of stake. That's a good question. I do know that with the uh, Hashpack wallet, you can stake your HBAR. I'm not sure if that's native staking. Uh, it's, I think it is. You just you just stake it. You don't have to put it in a pool or anything like that. Um, Algorand has native staking. Of course, Flare, you can lock up with your uh, Oracle. And I guess you could call that staking. I've got Akash and Kava locked up on Osmosis. Interesting to see what the U.S. does about staking. We shall see. Oh, yeah, he's excited about Hong Kong coming out with the Bitcoin ETF. A lot of you guys have been asking about Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong. Well, check this out. There's a giant Bitcoin ad right now talking about the ETF that's imminent in Hong Kong. There's definitely a lot of attention going on here because 
at the end of the day, when these ETFs launch, they need people to buy, right? So more and more ads, more and more attention, and Hong Kong's trying to push itself to be the center of Web3. So in this financial hub with so many people, we're going to see more of this. A lot of you guys have been asking about Bitcoin. Yeah, it's wild, guys. This, this space is growing so much. And it seems like it's growing so slow, though. Feels like we're standing still, waiting on the world to wake up. Wake up. Let's see what we have what here. What are some of the most dangerous Vincent, ways you think? Vincent Kennedy. Technology can be utilized in military warfare. Oh, yeah, this is a, some of the ways it's already being a long one here. It goes through psychological warfare. Um, that's a pretty good one. If you want to go watch that, it's on Vincent Kennedy's page at Vincent Crypt uh, 46. And Nerdy X always bringing some heat about the Fed. Hashtag in the Fed. Meetings can have lasting meaning. And a meeting on Jekyll Island, Georgia, 100 years ago this month was an important moment in the evolution of U.S. central banking. That meeting is also the reason for the gathering here today. An important outcome of the 1910 meeting was a proposal for an institution with multiple branches, which became in part the model for the decentralized structure of the Federal Reserve System. Oh, it's de decentralized. You hear that, guys? A series of financial panics, culminating in the Panic of 1907, prompted Congress to undertake a series that they had nothing to do with. the The big bankers didn't have anything to do with the panic to start with, series of causing all the the need for the Federal Reserve steps toward reforming the nation's monetary system to promote macroeconomic stabilization. Congress passed the Aldrich Vreeland Act in 1908, establishing an 18-member National Monetary Commission chaired by Rhode Island Senator Nelson Aldrich. The commission was charged with finding a way to reform the nation's monetary system, but progress was slow, and by 1910, the commission could not agree on a plan. Aldrich took matters into his own hands, meeting with a group of bankers on Jekyll to formulate a plan. The group included bankers Paul Warburg, Henry Davidson, and Frank Vanderlip. Also present were Aldrich's secretary, Arthur Shelton, and A. Piet Andrew, a Treasury official. Warburg's attendance was critical because of his knowledge of European banking practices. I wonder if the public was invited for this. <laughs> yeah, this is all private bankers, guys. Still to this day, it's privately owned bankers that create your dollar. Aldrich was well aware that his meeting with bankers outside of the commission proceedings would generate controversy, which is why the group met at the remote Jekyll Island location. What emerged from the Jekyll meeting was the so-called Aldrich Plan, presented to the National Monetary Commission as a legislative blueprint. It became a catalyst for debate about the role of the government in banking. Shigan shenanigans. That's all I'm going to say. Shenanigans. We're going to move on from that one. It's hard to watch stuff like that. Stuff that was created in secrecy and paved our way for this country for a, de a century to come. What a mess. And our, our grandparents, they didn't vote for any of that mess. All right, we're going to get out of here on the high note. We've got crypto area. This area, this is, uh, this is a good one here. I'll, I'll share a, a personal perspective, actually. So, um, you know, I'm, I grew up in Asia. My mom's Chinese. You'd think stereotypically to, that, that that means quite a conservative background. And, and oftentimes in careers, many women are looking for the, this is a stereotype, but looking for that more stable career path or a more flexible one. And, um, and when I told my mother that I was going to leave Oracle and, uh, and you know, a very stable, progressing career there and join a, a, a digital asset company called Ripple. And that reminds me, remember when they asked Gensler on the SEC, well, it was uh, MSNBC, I think, or CNBC talk show, you know, 
And Gensler was asking them, what, are you going to trust uh, an uh, decentralized database over Oracle? Well, yeah. Oracle's still a centralized company, guys. Uh, she inhaled sharply and said, well, we better talk to your aunties about this. And, uh, and what I told her was that we're, this technology is going to change the world. So I feel really strongly, if I, if I had the opportunity 30 years back to join Oracle at its insemination right before they started working with the US government, would I not have chosen to do that? Of course I would have. To be at the heart of that sea change, of course I would have done that. I believe that we need to be part of technologies, frameworks, programs that are... So she works for Ripple, guys, and she's comparing that time before Oracle exploded with right now with Ripple. So. ...are shaping the future. So we can't sit back and say, I want the safe route, because that means we're behind the curve. Mm -hmm. And... And I would encourage everyone to, you know, men, women, whatever background you're from, minorities, majorities, it's time to think about taking ownership of the future that we're creating and, um, and look for allies. So again, you know, the women in crypto, women in blockchain, they're actually very active communities. We're friendly faces right here. Uh, very happy to have conversations, reach out on LinkedIn, and, um, and, and happy to talk through what it takes because actually sometimes it's as simple as saying, I'm interested. Yeah, that's very bullish comparing that Oracle to today with Ripple. So she, is, uh, she has a smile on her face. Uh, Fanya Murray, Manager Director of Asia Pacific for Ripple. A uh, Ripple's all over the world, aren't they guys? Uh, let's keep it going, actually. We got a little positive note from AI and robots. You know, uh, we're not completely behind the loss of the jobs and all, but if you can get a robot to do this, this is uh, pretty cool. This is where AI will help humans clean in the bathroom. I'd rather AI do it than I have to. And we got from Real Ben, U.S. foreign aid since 1946. I just wanted to run through this really quick with you. Showing where the money's been. Since 1946. Let's see if it'll let me. No, it won't update. But right in uh, 54, you got the UK getting $80 billion, France getting $70 billion, and Germany getting 44, Italy 45, and Asia's in the yellow, Europe's in the red, and here in the blue is the Middle Eastern company, uh, countries. That's Turkey in the blue. And this is 1970. Vietnam, of course, the Vietnam War, lots of uh, foreign aid for that. And the Korean War, South Korea is in second. And here comes Israel in the blue in 1981 and 82, climbing fast, 84, 85. Look at the money that's going overseas. Total. And Israel gets in first place there. And our debt clock is just flying right now. There's a hundred and one point five billion dollars in nineteen ninety seven there. So this is uh I guess where our taxpayers dollars are going overseas. When we've got so many problems at home that nobody seems to care about, homeless problems. Israel and Egypt are number two with foreign aid. This is 2012, 2013. And you've got Afghanistan making its way up there. 
2017. Israel, Egypt, Afghanistan, Vietnam, respectively. And total per year, $2.5 billion in foreign aid. I'm all about helping countries, but shouldn't we have a say-so in that, guys? Shouldn't there be some kind of voting mechanism? I mean, I know we elect our officials, but you see what they've been up to. And let's keep it going. We've got XRP drops in the house. Let's see. How about that? The former CEO of PayPal saying, I was waiting for you to say more, Brad. Literally, every time I listen to Brad or Chris before, I've learned a little bit more. So it looks like PayPal is following Ripple's lead. Waiting for you to say more, Brad. Um, Because literally every time I listen to uh, Brad or Chris Larson before that, I learn a little bit more. Waiting for you to say more. So that's good to hear. Seems like Ripple are leaders in this blockchain space. First one in, first one out, hopefully. And I'm talking about the lawsuit. First one to battle the government, and they're the first one that's out. And just a reminder that Bitcoin only has the current administration's opinion of its status. That's all it has, guys. And here's uh, Mr. Mann again. The EU has mandated instant payments for the new standard, requiring banks to offer instant credit transfers within 10 seconds. PSPs have 9 to 18 months to implement the new requirements across the Eurozone and non-Eurozone countries. Right, okay. And, and what would you say are the main challenges that some of these banks have experienced when trying to roll out? Yeah, um, I mean, we, we say there's basically now simply speaking, two groups of banks uh, or financial, the ones they don't have instant at all. Right. Um, for them, the key challenge will be time, yeah, timeline. Mm-hmm. So uh, when the regulation will come into force, you have nine months from that. Mm-hmm. So that's expected to January, February next year. Uh, you have nine months to be able to receive instant payments and you have another uh, nine months, so 18 in all, to send instant payments. And then, what I said, there's some more time for the non-Euro countries in the EU yeah. uh, to implement it. But that's really a tight timeline. Yeah? Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, you know, if you implement instant payments, you need uh, interfaces to the embargo system, to the disposition system, to the booking system. And all of these, these interfaces then need to be 24-7, 365, and all of it in 10 seconds. So that's a challenge. So wow. there it's mainly the timeline and being ready. Uh, so they have to be ready by, he said, January or February next year. For those banks um, that already have it in place, uh, the other challenge is, I think, in three areas. One is, as I said, 24-7-365. It just makes a difference if maybe now you process, I don't know, a small number of transactions every day Mm -hmm. and suddenly the numbers go up. So your systems need to be much more resilient. Um, and, uh, And also maybe you had... Uh, we know some of the banks kind of had workarounds in place because mm. the numbers were low. Yeah, they got to slowly phase it in. But then, if the numbers go up, which which everybody's expecting, then you then you really need to be instant payments ready. Yeah. And this, for example, also applies when you um, uh, when you implement a new release, which mm-hmm. can be very um, uh, yeah, complicated. Um, and uh, there you, you're not able to say, okay, uh, dear customer, I'm not available for the next two, two hours because I uh, have a, a new release to be implemented. Yeah. So that's a challenge. So I would say a technology challenge. Then there's another one that the, um, that the regulation is not just focusing on, let's say, on the, the, the um, processing of the transactions. It's also fo- uh, focusing on implementing some fraud protection um, detection, etc., mechanisms. It's called the um, payment account validation. So you can use a service as a customer to say, uh, okay, I send you uh, 10 euros. Is it really, really your account or does the IBAN belong to somebody else mm-hmm. and I'm a victim of a, at least somebody trying to uh, to, to do some fraud. So there's additional functionalities. So yeah. th- those need to be implemented. And then 
The third area is business case. Yes. Uh, the, the regulation says it's not allowed for a SEPA instant credit transfer to be more expensive than a normal credit transfer. So <laughs> okay. banks need to rethink their business model. So that's the three. So technology, additional functionalities, and business case. That's right. They got to get it together. By next year, they can start implementing small transactions right now. And they've got till February to get all to get all this worked out. And this is going to benefit us and the banks, the smaller banks especially. The bigger banks don't like it because they are the liquidity banks and you have to go through them to get to other banks to do transfers now. But the smaller banks, uh, they, you know, they have to pass on that fee to their customers. But going forward, uh, it's going to be a level playing field. And as always, we're going to ch cover uh, Echo X, Echo the Truth on X. U.S. Debt Clot X serves as a gold and silver shield, safeguarding our freedom of expression, preventing the transformation of our system from liberty to tyranny. Let us dare to read, think, speak, and write. That was John Adams that said that. Know what you hold. This is the most recent secret image from the usdebtclock.org. Today's date is April 14th, 2024. And at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, we got this message. Freedom of expression. Calculate. Predict the future. Kingdom of heaven. The calm before the storm. The people's president. I will not quit ever. America wants its angel back. And you got to thank God that the United States of America has our liberty. Otherwise, we would end up like Brazil under a tyranny system. Pay attention to Brazil. There's a reason why they don't cover it. Brazil is the largest country in South America, integral to the global economy and a major producer of essential resources such as oil, grains, beef, and metals. Home to the Amazon and its immense resources for medical research. So what's going on? 2019 to 2022, the conservative and anti-establishment president, Jair Bolsonaro, was one of the most popular presidents in Brazilian history. He turned around the economy, reduced government spending, was tough on crime, and murders fell to an all-time Yeah, he was the Trump of Brazil. He respected and defended democracy and the freedom of the Brazilian people. During the pandemic, he was one of the world leaders most opposed to closures, quarantines, mask mandates, and mandatory vaccination requirements. The responsibility fell on the individual, and Brazilians could not be forced to comply. So where is he now? Not president. In 2022, the leftist former president Lula da Silva, who was imprisoned on corruption charges with the backing of the Biden administration and the CCP, mm -hmm. won a heavily contested election against a popular Bolsonaro in a runoff. Cries of rigged election and fraud flooded the streets in what ended in riots in the capital city. So why is this important? Since Lula has taken over Brazil, the following are happening. BRICS. Brazil is now joining with Russia, India, and China to ditch the U.S. dollar. CBDC. Brazil is moving to a central bank digital currency that the government can freeze funds or reduce balances. The Brazilian Supreme Federal Court is gathering from social media companies a list and identification data of all Bolsonaro's followers. Mm. Prisons are filling with political rivals. Descending journalists are being blocked by court order. And the federal government is exceeding their spending cap, consolidating all the wealth and redistributing it to left wing ideologies. Wow, what tyranny is going on down there, guys? And you heard uh, earlier, uh, late last week, the Brazilian uh, Supreme Court judge. Uh, asked Elon to censor journalists and other opposition leaders on X. Uh, guys, what kind of tyranny is going on in this world? Blockchain is going to fix it all. We have to keep pushing, guys. Oh, yeah. And the popular Bolsonaro is banned from running for president again until 2030. Wow. For his participation in an insurrection. Ah, that sounds Quick. familiar, doesn't it, guys? Check the media. Find the headlines. Far-right fascist should be charged with crimes against humanity for his defiance of science during COVID. Threatening democracy by criticizing... Threatening democracy. There we go with that again. Threatening democracy. When we're not even a, supposed to be a democracy, we're a constitutional republic, guys. ...the establishment is a racist for imposing law and order. 
and a fascist for questioning the electronic voting system. Mm. You can't make this stuff up. If you want to know where the United States is heading, you don't have to look far to see our future. Because that's what I believe X is for, is to shield, to help protect the United States of America mm -hmm. from turning into a tyranny system. Like Elon has said, X as humanity, collective consciousness. Shout out to Crystal P over at the community for posting this, where she looked up the meaning of the words on the Brazilian flag, as it means order and progress. And feel free to join in on the community over here on X. And you have to thank our founding fathers for establishing our liberties here in the United States of America. The second president of the United States, John Adams, let us dare to read, think, speak, and write, calculate, marvelous knowledge, the tower reversed, the silver warrior, and then we just have that U.S. dead clock image, mm -hmm. all layers delete, anyone helping XRP, Q? The Bible is a playbook for things to come. The floodgates are open. Let there be light. The truth is not hidden. It is unseen. Once seen, you can't unsee. That is why I'm not afraid. Dream come true. Now, this is something I noticed about the gears before we wrap things up. There is more teeth around the Liberty gears than the Tyranny gear. Which, in my opinion, the Liberty system is going to run a lot smoother and a higher position than the Tyranny system. That's right. But at the end of the day, X marks the spot. This is why it's so important to know what you hold. Let's go. God, you got to love Echo the Truth's energy. Uh, I saw some, um, some guys fudding some of his articles. I mean, look at the positivity from this guy. That's what we need. That's what this channel's about. Positivity and moving forward in a new system and getting rid of some of this tyranny that's been going on guys i'm gonna get out of here thank you guys so much for joining the show today um give me a like if you could and if you're new subscribe to the channel i'll get these times figured out where i can uh, stream at a certain time every day i'm still working on that but guys like uh echo the truth says know what you hold i'll see you on the next one guys take care mr connector out